Got an extra fancy one to show off today. Uh, finally got this finished for my buddy Sean, uh, his USMC build. So a lot of time and effort went into getting this thing just perfect. Um, in particular, his dial. So that's a super custom uh, dial uh, etched out in brass. Um, then I loomed it with uh, a blue loom mixed... Um, a loom that normally just kind of shows up as gray, and I mixed actual blue loom that looms, it shows blue as well, mixed it into it <clears throat> to give it uh, more of a blue kind of slate-esque color. And um, then we mixed the sand from Iwo Jima in there. He had sent me some sand, which I'm actually sending it back to you, buddy. I took some sand out of here, and uh, if I ever have any builds in the future, I only need just a tiny bit uh, to mix into the loom. So sands from Iwo Jima mixed into it. Um, this was a steel bezel um, that was uh, it was like steel plated over brass. So I had the chemical strip this. It turned it pink. Had to bake it uh, to bring back the color because like I guess the zinc um, whenever you strip it pulls the zinc from it. So I had to bake it and sand it and polish it to get it back to our brass color. Then I mix that same uh, loom up without the sand. Uh, the sand is decent size. You won't be able to get it <clears throat> really into those those areas. It's hard enough getting it in there and getting it to stay. Um, so those were etched deep. These are not very deep. So um, just that blue going on around there. Uh, we did the USMC here on the side, which I'll just flip it around and, and refocus. Then we did his K on the crown. Um, might be a little tough to see when you laser etch glass, it's on there, but it is tough to see. So laser etched a logo on their form. So stainless steel movement holder, uh, silver rotor, large window exhibition case back, and then a two piece core wing strap. We've got blue up one side, we've got red up the other, and then we've got a matching keeper uh, set for each. I was telling him if his wrist is decent sized and he doesn't have that much overlap left, you might have to take one of these keepers off. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be being used. Uh, and then a brushed uh, clasp on there as well. So that is his build. Um, getting that dial right, man, was tough. Getting it loomed was, was also a feat. Um, making the dial wasn't too hard. Getting the dial etched out low enough that the loom would stay in there. And then wet sanding it uh, was, I don't know, a good long morning event. Um, so uh, so we finally got there. So I appreciate your time and uh, waiting on me for it, buddy. And uh, I hope you will like it a ton. Um, Horween on here is pretty tight. It's new. It's um, so if you ever if you ever feel like it's tight on you and like not bending, just give it a little bit of pull. I used real thick um, spring bars in here, um, so I don't know just for some extra structure. But you can see, you know, there are times when it doesn't like this side bends decently easy, right? This side not as much, right? More stiff. But if you pull it, then it moves. So over time, as this rubs and rubs and rubs itself where it's so tight on here it will loosen itself up and then once it does just use some of this leather conditioner that i've included and just put it through here and just keep kind of rubbing it on what you what you do what i learned is i was always applying it over here but literally if you just flip this the whole way that way then you can get it real easy right here so once this is worn down to where it's going to be use some of that leather conditioner and kind of blend it in uh color way um, that's all you got to do. Same on both sides. So it's going to continue to rub, continue to rub. But use some of that leather conditioner and uh, and blend that collar palette in. But um, but yeah, that's how you do that. See, you can already see if you sit there and you keep rubbing that, it will go away. But once you mix it with that leather conditioner, <clears throat> it will bring that back to a to a normal looking color. So um, along those same lines. Um, Always include matching beads. Um, I don't know if Sean's a bead guy. He might be a bead guy. We'll find out. I don't know. Um, just have this in one of my special edition boxes. Um, 
and then the watch as a whole automatic mechanical um, bezels held on with the tension ring I put I put um, some dental floss around there before I snapped it on so it has a you know you have to physically move it so it doesn't just free spin but it's not on extremely tight where you got to like really work into it um, so it'll go left or it'll go right it's only held on with the tension ring uh, automatic mechanical so you can wind it you can wear it you can put it in a watch winder but if it is dead or you're not going to be very active you want to pre-wind it a little bit don't just set your time and then put it on and hope for the best pre-wind it a little bit so you're going to back the crown off the threads until you hear it and feel it clicking at that point you can wind and a wind is a turn away from you turning it back doesn't do anything but it's a lot easier to keep your fingers spacing and go back and forth so if you do this for four or five seconds before you put it on, you will keep time throughout the day. And if you do it for something closer to 20 seconds, you're going to max out your 31 plus hour power reserve. You cannot overwind it. You can wind it all day if you'd like. It will not hurt anything. And then when you're good to go, you pull it to the one and only click, and that's where you can set your time. It's not a hacking movement, so it's going to just keep going. Okay, Google, what time is it? It's 12.15 p.m. That's what I thought it was. And just push it. Oh, the other thing is you've got a wobble crown, so it will deflect lateral pressure getting put into, um, you know, from pushing and prying on it. So it's not going to bend your stem, not going to put pressures on your movement. So if you're that worried about it, you can always just pull it straight as you're setting your time. Okay, Google, what time is it? Okay, Google, what time is it? 12.15 p.m. That's pushing 12, 16 p.m. So we're just going to throw it over here just a little bit. Push it right back over and thread it down. Oh, yeah. Um, gold handset and then just a nice light blue. I wanted that light blue to kind of match as best as I could um, with this blue going on around here, which is more of a vibrant blue. You can kind of see it better when it's all together rather than spread thin. Um, so uh, nice little, little pop of color. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, as with every build, it comes with watch cleaners. It's good on all glass and metal parts, everything here in the middle. Non-streaking, non-toxic, non-residue. That leather conditioner we were talking about, um, just put a tiny bit on there, which I might even throw some on there before I give it to you. Uh, yeah, I got a rag right beside me. Um, so, perfect time to actually just show it. I have some here that I use. Um, it is like a, It is a liquid. All right, and you can see it kind of move, so a little bit will go a long way. But um, it's just an old rag, I'm assuming it will work just fine. But just get a tiny bit and then apply it to the leather and let it sit. And this will be good for your leather anyway because that horween's a little bit stiff. So you just rub it on. So you can see where I've been and where I have it, man. And then flip this back around to the top. I'll throw some in there. And I love how my phone does not know what to focus on, and then I gotta touch it to get it to focus on something. And this stuff actually smells really good too. So, apply some there, and flip this thing back around, and apply it in there. go so you've got your little marks where that's kind of so there's two little marks that's where it's catching on the little uh, section in between here it's which is the channel where the case back goes down in before the the ring goes on so uh, that's where it will chunk it out a little bit but um, that's it in a nutshell But uh, leather conditioner, so that's what I just showed you. Um, you can pull apply to the top, to the bottom. 
But you can just see I dabbed just two bits and did the whole back side of that watch. So you have that much in there. There is a bunch. So um, when you put it on, you just let it sit for like a minute. Um, and it says, you know, you're supposed to remove any excess, but I just let it soak in. I just do it and then just let the watch sit there and let it soak in. So, uh, so leather conditioner. Then we've got um, Novus 2 from Amazon just repackaged. This is um, uh, essentially like a poly watch. This is an acrylic glass. You can scratch it, but if you do, just put a tiny bit on it, buff against it, um, so perpendicular to it, to fill that scratch. Um, and then use your included microfiber to buff that out. Um, generate some heat with your thumb. You will knock it out way quicker, 15, 20 seconds, and that will be perfectly brand new shiny glass again. Um, so it's a very thick acrylic glass. Um, and that's it, man. So, Sean, thank you so much, buddy. I'm going to include your Iwo Jima Sam back in there. I took a, a nice size vial of it, probably, you know, five, six grams of it. Uh, and I maybe need a portion of a gram, you know, upwards of a gram to even use. So um, if I ever need any from you in the future, I'll send you a vial <laughs> for you to put some in there for me. Um, but I think I've got enough in here to do at least another five or six USMC builds or anything along those lines that somebody wants. I've only done two watches like that. So um, and I appreciate that you letting me have that the first time for me to do it in the first watch. So um, thank you, buddy. I hope you are doing well. And if you want me to build you something custom and unique, reach out and I'll see what I can do. And if you want to continue to see videos like this, like and subscribe because I put them up all the time. Thanks, guys.